Hello, my name is Patrick Godfrey, and today we'll be looking at fab number 33, conjoint trade-off analysis. Using this graph, we will see how companies assess whether or not to make improvements and how those improvements or changes to their existing products will alter value and perceived market price. We will now look at determining the importance of each product feature. Any new product feature will cause a shift along the x-axis. This new quality will cause a response along the y-axis. For fairly priced products, this shift will be along the fair value line, meaning that if I increase value this much, and I've been operating there, I will now operate at this point in a new price. Different features will solicit a different market response. The addition of leather seats, for instance, to a car will likely move the point of operation rightward on the x-axis. On the other hand, removing power windows from a car and instead having roll-down windows will cause the point of operation to shift leftwards. As you know, it is important to note that not all new features aimed to improve are equal. I know, we don't usually associate the Consumer Electronics Show with high fashion, like this fab platform shoe that even the king would approve of. Huh. But this shoe has a dirty little secret. It's a vacuum cleaner. I have revolutionized and made this cup better. My product, 180 cup, it is a fundamental drinking cup when right side up. And when flipped 180 degrees, it acts as a shock glass. Now look at the impact that product design has on trade-off analysis, on the trade-off analysis graph. It's important to do cost-benefit analysis and tweak the features until finding a perfect medium along the fair value line. A perceived improvement might not correspond to an equal increase in the value of a product. For instance, you might invest $1,000 into adding leather seats into your vehicle as a manufacturer, but the value in the market might only increase 800 Therefore, you wouldn't make that change. In trade-off analysis, it is also important to estimate market shares under various scenarios. For a company that's producing an inferior good, an inferior good meaning a good that um, will increase in popularity uh, along with a decrease in income, they're going to want to produce a more minimalistic style product because their market will likely not want to pay for additional features and they will operate in that area of the graph. On the other hand, premium product brands such as BMW, for instance, are going to want to operate in this portion of the graph and include an array of costly features because their customer base desires the absolute best. An important aspect of conjoint trade-off analysis is evaluating price sensitivity. A very price-sensitive market is likely going to drop off their amount of purchases for a small change in price. Somebody with a very price sensitive market should likely consider not adding any expensive. The real possibility that needs to be considered when contemplating whether or not to launch a new product is the potential for cannibalization. Cannibalization is the risk that a new product will hinder sales of an old or previous product that is on the market. Harley Davidson found this out the hard way when they really angered their existing loyal customer base of tough guys and launched a pink Harley Davidson. Sales of other bikes plummeted. Finally, we look at identifying market segments. It is important to know your target audience when launching a product and considering adding new or different features. If your audience is older, more wealthy clientele, then you might want to consider a more high end to, uh, line of products. Whereas if you have a younger clientele that might not care as much, you might consider a more stripped down product. This trade-off analysis is very important because it allows us to see how companies make decisions as to whether or how to change and improve existing products.